Welcome back to my channel, Alexandre here. I'm a blockchain engineer and a full stack developer. Today I'm gonna talk about the IOTA coordinator. I'm gonna try to explain what is IOTA coordinator, how it works, why is it centralized, why is it necessary for the IOTA foundation to run the coordinator. I even proposed a very simple solution to get rid of the coordinator. I'm not an IOTA developer, but a few years ago I was doing some kind of research into the IOTA Tangle and here are a few conclusions of the IOTA coordinator. The Tangle is just a simple data structure. In order to create a cryptocurrency or to create some kind of decentralized network, you don't really need only a data structure, you need also consensus models. This is also the difference between Bitcoin the blockchain and the transaction itself. The blockchain doesn't work without the consensus. You really need a consensus in the entire network. Only one node is proposing the next transactions to be included in this global blockchain. So IOTA uses this tangle as a data structure storing all the transactions into an order. But unfortunately, it is very, it is very easy to hack the tangle itself without having a stronger kind of consensus mechanism. So for this problem, IOTA Foundation, when they launch the IOTA Tangle, uh, they launch a coordinator. In order to have some kind of uh, cryptocurrency run on top of your decentralized network and to make it to have a value, you really need to prevent double spending and other kind of attacks as well. In order to avoid this double spending, you need a consensus model. The Tangle itself is not solving the consensus problem. This is the reason why the IOTA Foundation created the IOTA coordinator and the network itself. They split the problem of the consensus in two different sections, the coordinator and the network itself. Uh, they said, let's do at least one thing decentralized, which is the network. But the coordinator right now, it is not decentralized. It's still centralized by the IOTA Foundation. So it means that one person or a small group of people from the IOTA Foundation is running this coordinator. If the coordinator is down, it got some kind of a bug or something, uh, you know, it got an error or something like that, the entire network will be stopped because the coordinator is shut down. So this is the one of the biggest problem when you are creating a cryptocurrency, but still you have a centralized part. The IOTA developers are saying that the, the coordinator itself is not able to do double spending. Uh, they did a small engineering trick, namely, when they split the, the consensus problem in two different sections, the coordinator and the network, they said, okay, let's do the coordinator to do the milestones, to validate the transactions and propose the new milestones with the next transaction to be, gen to be validated by the coordinator. And they said, then the network, the second part of the consensus, the network, the decentralized network of Dayota said, okay, let's read all those milestones from the, from the coordinator, let's check if the milestones, uh, they don't do any kind of double spending or, they are, or the coordinator was trying to revert a previous milestone. In case the coordinator was trying to revert a milestone by creating a double spending, then the decentralized network will no longer accept the data, the transaction from the, from the coordinator. So by doing this, they, they were able to prevent the double spending from a potential coordinator attack. But is it a decentralized solution? Not really. It's not a decentralized solution because, for example, let's say, uh, you know, the, the, the coordinator was a little bit more decentralized, not run by one person, by just, you know, a couple of people. It means that uncles, if you know the, the, the term uncle uh, from the blockchain, from the Bitcoin itself, uncles are impossible to be managed on the IOTA uh, consensus. Uh, because it means that a milestone was proposed by the by a coordinator or something like that and then it was reverted by creating a longer milestone or a better milestone or something like that so by not having this solution it means the coordinator must be run by someone who assures that no uncle's milestones will be created in the network itself otherwise the coordinator will propose more and more milestones while the decentralized network will no longer accept the milestones because there was some kind of a fork there was some kind of an uncle milestone um, generated by the coordinator so the decentralized network will stop receiving the information the milestones from the coordinator itself to decentralize a little bit the network iota proposed this concept of milestones what means 
uh, that the coordinator, the IOTA coordinator, is validating transactions, making a super kind of transaction, saying, uh, you know, all those transactions have been validated, there is no double spending in those transactions, and I'm signing with a special private key owned by the coordinator, by the IOTA people um, from the foundation. This is a milestone, and the coordinator will never try to revert any of those uh, milestones in all any of those transactions. So, achieving some kind of um, immutability by saying that the coordinator will never propose any fork or any uncle milestone. Asking the question why the IOTA Foundation cannot get rid of, the, of this coordinator that easy, it's quite simple. Um, it's, it's a little bit tricky to get rid of this coordinator because you're gonna have this problem with the milestones, uncles, with the forking of your own uh, network, with the milestones. And because of this special rule that there is no uncle milestone and any, any kind of milestone forks, into the coordinator, you cannot create a decentralized kind of coordinator. There can be a few solutions of how to get rid of this IOTA coordinator. I propose you a very simple solution of how to remove the IOTA coordinator, but still, I'm not an IOTA developer, so maybe this is just a, a theoretical solution. You can create a small proof of stake macro blocks blockchain. That means, like you do with the milestones every minute, you create a macro block every minute with all the transactions, like in a Merkle tree, with all the transactions that had been validated. Many people involved in the IOTA, owning a lot of IOTA coins, will be able to, to stake um, into this proof of stake macro block chain by proposing new blocks based on how many coins they have, making confirmations which transactions should be included into the IOTA DAG. Blockchain is still also DAG. So, you know, it's not necessary to get rid of all those blockchain solutions or something like that, especially proof of, proof of stake solutions. Another question would be, you know, most of those proof of stake solutions, they, uh, they reward users with new coins printed out of, of thin air. It's not necessary for the IOTA proof of stake macro blocks chain to reward users for proposing uh, these new blocks to the network. You can make it free, so no more coins must be printed from the thin air. You can also incentivize the honest nodes by, you know, collecting small fees, but all of this is not necessary. You can make it free of charge for everybody, uh, you, you can make it scalable by using sharding networks of the macro blocks and so on, but it's still it's better kind of solution and it's just a simple. It's, it's a simple out of the box uh, solution of how to move the centralized coordinator into a more decentralized uh, coordinator run by the IOTA users who are owning coins and they could you know stake proposing the new blocks with the new transactions uh, into a chain that will become immutable after a few confirmations, maybe a few minutes, uh, like one, two minutes, maybe you can create the macro blocks every like uh, 10 seconds, every 40 seconds or something like that. So this simple solution can get rid of the IOTA coordinator super fast. It's not necessary to be the perfect solution. It, it can be an idea to think about in order to get rid of this IOTA coordinator. Uh, because having a centralized coordinator uh, will have bad impact on the community and especially because you know you can shut down the coordinator anytime you want. The IOTA coordinator is not permissionless. They can decide which transaction should be included and which transaction should not be included. Uh, and this permissionless uh, was designed in the Bitcoin in most of other cryptocurrencies uh, to be free for everybody and uh, to be permissionless for everybody. I really believe IOTA has a great future and uh, many solutions can be implemented in order to get rid of this coordinator. If you like my explanation about how the IOTA coordinator works, smash that subscribe button to get notified when my next videos about IOTA or about crypto will be uploaded. Thank you so much for your time and uh, I wish you an amazing day.